Hi guys, Seth with Hornady, and I'm sitting down with senior ballistician Jaden Quinlan. We're talking new products for 2025, specifically the 338 Advanced Rifle Cartridge. Now, Jaden, one of the more common questions we've been getting about the 338 Arc is its comparison to the 86 Blackout. What's your take on that? Well, the 86 Blackout has kind of been out available for a couple years now. A lot of people were really excited to adopt it, and for good reason. You know, people were looking for that next level in subsonic performance. And that kind of came in the form of the of the 86 Blackout at the time that it was introduced, but there was also a lot of issues that came along with that as well. Some of those issues are the uh, the case capacity of the 86 Blackout case. It's not really optimized for subsonic performance. It's it's essentially too much. Okay, there's too um, much room in that. That's case. right. Yeah, the amount of propellants that you're burning for subsonic loads are are significantly lower than the amount of case capacity that that case has, and that generally means that you're going to have change in position of the propellant within the case. That's not what you want for low velocity spreads or standard deviation. And when it comes to subsonic performance, you have to have that to be successful. Otherwise, your group sizes can get really big, not very far downrange. A couple other issues with it, it goes into an AR-10 system if you want to run it in a gas gun. That's just a bigger frame, it's heavier, and you don't really need that for a subsonic cartridge. Um, you've said it many times, and I couldn't say it better myself, that 1050 is 1050, talking about velocity, that when, when you're using subsonic ammunition, you have to be below the speed of sound by definition. It doesn't matter how big the case is behind it or how much powder you put in there. If it goes over that speed, it's no longer subsonic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last part, which is probably the, the biggest issue that we've seen is a lot of the barrel twist rates that are available are a very, very fast twist rate. Now there has been some conversation about that, making your terminal performance a little bit better. There's some spin energy concepts and stuff like that. Frankly, what it's doing is causing a bullet that's designed to expand, to expand more rapidly, so it reaches its full frontal diameter quickly. That will change the, the, the wound channel dynamics that it produces slightly, sure. but the trade-offs of it is that uh, spinning bullets that fast, they don't work as designed anymore terminally. So if you take a bullet that's designed to work at a more traditional twist rate and you shoot it out of that faster twist rate, it's not gonna work the way you expect it to from the manufacturer. And in addition to that, you can have bullet integrity problems. You can have bullets, especially cup and core, so a lead core, copper jacketed traditional bullet that can come apart outside of the barrel. And that can be very, very damaging to suppressors, to muzzle brakes, and also possibly to the shooter or things around them if any of those bullet fragments decide to ricochet around a little bit. Sure. So with the 338 ARC, we didn't set out to fix the problems of the 86 Blackout with the 338 ARC. It actually predates it by quite a ways. We've mm -hmm. been messing with this cartridge since 2017. But up until now, the reason the 338 ARC really has, has a place in the market is because of the success of the ARC family of cartridges and the way they fit in the AR-15, that smaller platform. It's just a great complement to the amazing supersonic performance you get out of the 22 ARC and the 6 ARC. Well, now you have subsonic capability that far exceeds anything out there. Awesome. Thanks, Jaden. Guys, for more information on the 338 ARC and all 2025 new products, check them out at Hornady.com.